Thank you, President. My question is for the Minister for Local Government. When it comes to regional rates policy, governments of either colour have issued reports, reviews and recommendations, but really very little action. Last Saturday's edition of the Sunraysia Day in Daily, the editor wrote a column where he spoke about his sister who lives in Box Hill. Her property is worth twice as much as his property on the outskirts of Mildura, yet she pays half the rates. So a person with a modest property in the most isolated part of the state is paying at least twice the rates of others closer to Melbourne. This is the definition of a broken system. What assurance can the government's latest review give us that there will finally be some economic, economic equity for our ratepayers in the regions? Minister Lean. Um, yeah, and, and can I thank Ms Patton for the question and thank you for the call, President. Um, as far as um, giving guarantees, Ms Patton, I've said before, it's a fraught thing for any minister to give a guarantee about anything, but I, I do appreciate the question. And, um, let us say, comparing properties of same value or more value in different councils does not provide an accurate comparison as it up to, it's up to each council to set rates each year within the mandated rate cap based on the services and infrastructure needs of their community. And councils use property values to uh, apportion the council's rates payable by each individual property in their municipality. On the issue of rural councils and their sustainability. Um, rural councils are very reliant on the federal financial assistance and we have um, been lobbying for more money from that fund to go to uh, rural councils and I've um, had some really good interactions with the federal minister, uh, Minister Coulton, who I've got to say is um, actually quite a pleasure to work with. Um, he has rural council sustainability on his radar as well and I think every other jurisdiction every other state and territory actually has indicated this to the federal minister as well. This is something to be looked at um, hopefully in the new year. Uh, rural council sustainability is an area that um, I'm very keen to do some work on in the new year. Um, the Premier has asked me to actually do work on that, which is, um, I like the Premier, he's a good bloke and I'm happy to, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to, uh, I'm happy to, uh, for, for, by his instructions. Um, so I think um, there's some good work we can do. And I really take Ms Patton's point around, I have a, had a number of meetings with Rural Councils Victoria, the representative group, and they've said to me, please, no more reviews, no more uh, put the chamber on notice, no references to committees. They want, they want something done about this issue. I've had a number of conversations with my colleagues, which include Ms Shing, Mr Jepp, the ministers that represent uh, regional Victoria as well over the last few months. Um, and I'm keen to fulfil the Premier's uh, request that we do some real work on this, not a review. Um, it is an issue. I've had a number of uh, conversations with rural councils. And when you take into the rural councils in the North East, it's been through the bushfires and then, then the COVID this year. Um, it's not, it's not an easy task for them. They do, I've got to say, they do a great job. They do a great job, the rural councils, and um, our government's keen to work with, them on, work with them on their sustainability, and I'm sure we'll find ways to assist. Thank you, Ms. Patton, on the supplementary. Thank you, President, and, and thank you, Minister, and it's, it's encouraging to hear that you are lobbying the federal minister. Um, but again, I think it sort of went back to well, councils need to weigh this up. And I, I you know, with my, my new colleague, Ali Kappa, she, who's been on local government for many years in Mildura, she, as she pointed out, that it's, it's, a, it's, a so, it's a really difficult, it's a really difficult choice that they can either sort of put up, their, they either put up their rates or they cut their services. And I think you, really, you did allude to that. But it's, what, what, what she was pointing out to me is that there is a simple change that could be made to the formula for the distribution of those federal assistance grants, and that 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 that, that we as a state gov that you as a state government could actually just turn the dial slightly, and um, so I guess I'm, I'm asking, would you finally look at taking that step, Mr. Lee? Uh, thank Ms. Patton for a question. Um, uh, yeah, as I stated, I think the issue is that um, obviously it's a federal federal fund; it does get administered by the state, but. 
Um, there is a requirement that there's a minimum uh, payment to each council. So you have councils like Melbourne City Council and, and Whitehorse, as you mentioned, that, that, that probably that amount of money they receive doesn't make a great difference to their budget, where if that amount of money went to, say, uh, East Gippsland, uh, Tawong, Bull Oak, it would make a huge difference. So this is a conversation that I'm having with the Federal Minister. Of course, you know, they've got, like as I said, it's a federal fund. Uh, we've lobbied for more in that fund, but of course they have to have parameters around it as well, being a federal fund. But um, I think that's the sort of conversation that, as I said, most states and territories have really got their eye. This is a, this is a national issue. So, uh, and, and as, as I said, um, really keen to work in this area and happy to, ta happy to get any, um, any advice from anyone that's keen to give it to me on this. Thank you.